Well, hello friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are gonna work on some system stuff and it's gonna be about non-responsive applications. So I would like to have a feature where uh, if you have an app that's not responding, then we would uh, gray out the window and maybe show like not responding in the title bar, some stuff like that. Because uh, I feel like right now, if something stops responding, you don't really have any clue other than maybe um, like if you try to interact with it, nothing will happen. But uh, actually like changing the appearance and uh, amending the title would be, a, would be really nice. So um, the way uh, we're going to do this is by uh, tracking um, a timestamp on IPC clients of the Windows server. And then if too much time goes by, uh, since our, the last time we heard from, from one of the windowing clients, we'll just uh, maybe send him like a ping. And then if he, if he doesn't respond to that, then um, we'll gray him out. So let's see. Uh, I guess the first thing we can do is maybe uh, make something that hangs. <laughs> that would be a good idea. So maybe when you open an about dialog, for example, uh, we can just make it hang instead. So when you click or when you click OK in the about dialog, let's do an infinite loop here. Something like that, right? So let's see what that would look like right now. I'm having some pretty bad allergy um, related issues today, by the way, but hopefully uh, I'll be able to make a video. We'll see. My eyes keep um, itching and welling up and all kinds of stuff. So if you click here, now this thing is hung, right? Uh, but there's no indication and um, really there's there's no way for us to know that it's that other than like looking at a call stack of the about app, we can see that it's doing a sleep inside. Um, inside the about dialog stuff. But yeah, so so let's see how to, how to make this thing actually gray out. So in the IPC uh, system for the client connection, we can just add a timer. So whenever we get a message, we'll start a timer. And then we can always ask the IPC client, hey, how long since last time um, I heard from you? So we'll use like a core elapsed time. Um, time since last message received. Um, time since last message received. Wait. I forget what the API of this guy is. Elapsed time timer is the name of it. Um, so it's this thing. So it has start and elapsed, and it just tells you in milliseconds like how long since you called start. That's the whole API. So um, I guess we can do something here like milliseconds since last message received, uh, receive timer, receive a lapsed timer. Lapsed. Okay. And then um, and then we need to actually reset that clock whenever we get a message. So drain messages from client would basically just um, wait, how does this work? So we decode the message and then 
we run the message handler and if that gives us a response then we post a response otherwise nothing okay so after each message is handled I guess we can do this thing or hmm. let's see train I guess we can we should we should make sure that we have some decoded bytes or if bytes is empty if it's not empty then uh, receive elapsed timer start yeah okay and then in uh, Windows Server we can so let's see um, what if we just did this in the compositor for example just to test it out um, so when we compose the window stack and we're gonna draw some window um, then where do we blit the window blitting from the window backing store right here okay so that would be uh, if window client and window client milliseconds since last message receive is greater than three seconds, say, then can we just use a different API here, like blit dimmed, maybe? Um, it doesn't have opacity, but we'll, we'll try it out at least. I'm kind of curious if this will work. And maybe we should, maybe we should disable the opacity if something hangs. So maybe that's, maybe that's not the end of the world if, if BlitDim doesn't have opacity support. Um, bum, 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 bum. Oh, why is this building so slow today? Hmm. Unclear. Um, but I think I think this will be an interesting feature. So another thing we'll want is basically we're gonna want to probe because um, right now we're just gonna gray it out um, if we try to compose something that has timed out. But really we want to have um, a step in between where. Um, we track in Windows Server so that uh, we send out a ping message, which we, I guess, can define in Window Client. Um, we'll come up with a new message here, like ping. It'll be async. And um, And we'll have a Pong that he sends to the Windows server, so Pong. Right. Um, yes, we'll do those. And I guess then I have to do another big rebuild. So we might as well start it. Oh, and then we have to... Add a handler, so oops, oops, there we go. So handling the pong message is very, very simple. Um, it's oh, why did I copy any of that? I wanted to copy this. Handling the pong message is very simple because we just have to clear some kind of or reset some kind of timer, I guess. Or, in fact, we don't need to do anything because the IPC mechanism will um, bump that elapsed timer just by receiving the pong. So we can just do nothing. Uh, isn't that nice? And then we'll need the equivalent in the Windows Server connection object in the GUI. So here we'll now have... Notice, by the way, how all of these messages are asynchronous. That's very nice. It would be terrible if 
um, Windows Server would synchronously call any of its clients, like blocking the Windows Server. And that's a big no-no. So uh, Windows Server connection handle uh, messages window client ping was supposed to be the message, not pong. Oh, I did, I did write ping. Okay. And what we'll do here is uh, we'll post a response. So messages window server pong. All right. Um, ba -ba -ba. So I guess in the Windows Server client connection object, we really want to have some kind of fancy state for this. So like we can call it like um, unresponsive, for example. This reminds me that I need to, <laughs> I need to go and make boost and deboost work again. Uh, I broke them a long time ago and I, I need to fix them. M responsive. Okay, and then I think uh, unresponsive. And then I think we will uh, let's see how we're going to do this. So when we get the pong message, we can clear that thing right away. So unresponsive is false, or let's say set unresponsive. Let's make a little helper for this so that we can put some logic in it. Um. Oh, hey, it booted. <laughs> nice. OK, uh, let's bring up the about dialog and then uh, click OK. So it starts getting goofy and Okay, <laughs> so now it's it's uh, composing that window in a dimmed state, but uh, we didn't invalidate the whole window, so I have to I have to like yeah there we go cause it to to be that way somehow. Uh, I think maybe dimmed was not the thing I was looking for. Maybe I wanted like darkened, but the general idea was good. Um, so compositor, instead of dimmed, we'll do, do we have with filtered? Uh, man, I forget how this works. We have brightened and dimmed. And oh, and we can just implement our own thing, right? So. Split filtered position source source rect and then a filter so color source um, so what kind of what kind of filter are we gonna put here not to grayscale lighten but rather to grayscale darkened. I like this API. It's not particularly efficient, but it's very expressive, right? Like you can you can blit an image and then you just have an arbitrary uh, pixel filter. So this this uh, lambda here gets called for every single pixel, and you can manipulate it however you like before it's committed to the image. Um, oh shit! I forgot to implement set unresponsive. So. What are we going to do with that? So if unresponsive is already the same as this, then that's a no-op. OK, and also, why did I write them that way? I normally I write them the other way around. I don't know why, but that was going to bother me. So, um, so whenever this state changes, we need to invalidate all of, the, all of our windows. So for um, auto window in M windows. 
and then we got um, invalidate. Okay, so repaint, basically invalidate to cause it to repaint the window. So that's good. And then um, you know what we could do is or hmm. Oh, wait, what's a good way of doing this? What's a good way of doing this? It would be kind of cool if this was a um, thing that lived in the IPC layer entirely. Or not, maybe not entirely, but this would be like a virtual thing that you would just provide. But before we go any further, let's just um, test out that the rendering looks nicer. <laughs> Because I want to see that. I want to see if the darkening looks good. So about clickety clack, and that was just weighty weighty. See now it's doing the thing. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I think I think that's actually really awesome. So um, let's change the logic though, so that it's not if uh, we don't check the time here, but we would just check if the client is unresponsive. Because then it's much more expressive what's going on. So if we have a window client and it's not responsive, then we don't have to touch compositor anymore because I think this part is pretty good. Um, and then in the client connection, um, Maybe what we should do, instead of having tracking the elapsed time, we can do a regular core timer here. So we can do a timer, um, responsiveness timer, and we can just start this fella. Let's see, how do we do this? Um, oh, I need, I need core timer, uh, and basically we'll just start him with, uh, we'll set him as a single shot timer, and we will set his interval to three seconds, because that's, uh, I don't know, it's just a number. Maybe that's not the best number, but it's a number. Uh, and then here we can just reset him, restart. And then when he times out, what we'll do is on timeout. Um, what we will do is call uh, responsiveness timer timed out. I guess something like that. Or did become unresponsive. Or may have become unresponsive. And then that will just be a virtual and then if anybody who subclasses the client connection like we do in Windows Server, it's up to him to do something about this because um, in many cases you don't care if you don't hear from somebody in three seconds, right? Um, but you might care. So let's see. Set our responsive. And then what we would do here is just implement this. So uh, may have become unresponsive. And uh, oh, maybe 
we can move this thing down here actually so they can be together override oh no 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 what am i doing i wanted to go here okay Set unresponsive true. Okay, so then it becomes like that, and then we invalidate. And then what we'll do is, uh, oh wait, hold on, no, no, it's not unresponsive yet. First, we gotta send a ping. So we'll send a ping um, post message. Messages, window client, ping, uh, ping timer, let's say pong timer. Um, let's call it ping timer. Start, uh, or maybe we can even have a null ping timer normally, actually. So ref putter core timer, m ping timer. Okay, so here we'll just create a new timer. So core timer construct. Um, and we'll give him two seconds. I don't know. <laughs> or actually, he should respond right away if he's in the event loop. So we'll give him one second. Um, and then if he doesn't reply in a second, yeah, that's good. So then we will have a callback in which we will um, bam, 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 call set unresponsive true, true, not responsive. Yes, that's right. Um, wait, do we have a helper for single shot? Create single shot. That's the one I wanted. Yes, that's the one I wanted. But if in that time we do receive a, uh, a Pong, then we do set our response and false, but we also nuke the ping timer so that we don't get the callback. Okay. So that's the basic mechanism, right? Uh, here, let's log that we're doing this. So uh, client may have been become unresponsive sending ping didn't get pong in time marking as unresponsive and then here we will say uh, got a pong marking as responsive okay milliseconds since. Yeah, I feel like I forgot to remove that one, which I did. Okay. And we are missing... What are we missing? Oh, I thought... Oh, restart changes the interval. Okay, we want start. All right, fine, whatever. Um, that's fine, we'll just do start, and let me just verify that that does the right thing, so uh, that might not do the right thing. Wait, why doesn't timer have a restart that just restarts using the existing interval? Let's just add that, because that's obviously a useful function. My vision is blurry from the frickin' allergies. <laughs> so it's like all the text is uh, hazy. But it's big enough that I can do this, uh, I think. It's unusually big today. Normally I'm at this size, but today we're doing 150 because I'm uh, slightly blind. Um, restart. 
M interval. Yeah, there we go. And if I keep talking about my allergies, I'm going to start sneezing too, probably. But this is going pretty well so far, so... Um, let's see, this is a nice feature to just commit by itself, so let's do that. Commit libcore add timer restart convenience API okay. simply restarts the timer uh, with the already set interval. Only second interval. Ah, oh, it's too long. Um, with the existing. Aha, it fit. Okay, so, oh, this is, um, oh, interesting, he's just pinging, <laughs> he's pinging random programs. Um, this might be a little too aggressive, we'll see. So, oh, didn't get Pong in time, marking as unresponsive, and then he became like that. That's so cool. So let's see if we wanted it to um, in the about dialog. What if we like to sleep for a while, but not forever? So we'll sleep for like some irritating time, like six seconds. Because then there will be a, a ping in the pipeline that he'll have to respond to when he wakes up. Oh, there we died instead. What the heck? Um, why did we die? Oh, wait, wait, wait. What did I do there? I did a sleep and then I died? But why? Okay, I am mystified. We're gonna have to um, investigate this, but uh, let's see. So this is just very noisy, so let's just calm that down a little bit. And this one as well. So now he's like that. Oh, right, because I'm clicking OK. <laughs> so he's supposed to exit. I'm just, just, I'm just being stupid. All right, so what if we make the button not work uh, so that it doesn't actually exit? And then uh, we just sleep and then wake up again. Let's see that the window correctly goes back to its normal shade. Mm. That's pretty cool. I like it. Um, okay, so maybe the uh, darkening is a little on the dark side. So let's just tweak that. What is the default darkening? 05. So let's do 075F instead. And um, when we do titles, where do we do window frame? Draw text. I'm thinking we could do the title text a little differently for unresponsive clients. So title text. Uh, if window client and window client is um, or if it is unresponsive and we need window, window client connection. Yeah, 
Yeah, so if it's unresponsive, then title text. Um, it's really going to be, actually, let's do it this way. So, else. Um, title text is this. Uh, otherwise, we use a string builder. Something like that. Look at that. I like it. It's very cool. So then let's test this out if we um, go to some website. This is <laughs> the current state of the acid 2 test, by the way, looking good since yesterday. If you go to Reddit, which takes like forever to load, let's go to the programming subreddit. I don't know if it will load at all. But basically, I feel like this thing should. Or will it become unresponsive? I don't know. I mean, it's doing um, networking stuff. We'll see when he starts doing maybe some stuff in the browser process. Oh, oh, look at that, unresponsive. Mm, this stuff is a little weird. What the actual heck? I'm sure there's some explanation for this. Oh, look at the memory usage. It's trending up. Um, I don't know what's the deal with this. Maybe it's some alpha blending problem. But anyway, this this feature clearly clearly kind of works. And, oh, are we going to crash? I think maybe we're going to crash, dude. Let's see. Oh, kernel panic, out of memory. Sucks, dude. OK, that's pretty bad. But that's good to know that <laughs> we can get a kernel panic by going to our programming. Um, anyway. Unresponsive, it feels a little stale, so I'm going to call it not responding. Because um, I think that sounds a little bit catchier. Uh, let's just see. I'm thinking, should we do it in lowercase? But maybe uppercase is fine. That's pretty good. Yeah. Very like. So this feature is awesome. Um, the one thing that's a bit sad about it is that it's um, it's a little bit aggressive, right? Like contacting all of these clients when they seem to be fine, or there's there's like no indication, there's no reason to believe that they're not fine. So. Maybe, let's see. I think maybe this will be okay for a first cut. And then uh, an optimization to this would be to figure out like, maybe maybe not always probe, but like only probe when we're interacting with a window or something like that. Um, but for a first cut, I think this is definitely strong enough. So I'm gonna turn this into some commits. Here, we're just fixing a typo. Fix typo in forward h. Ooh, am I gonna sneeze? Is it gonna happen? Uh, we'll see. 
So then all of these things are this feature, basically. With some irritating plank format changes, but we can dodge those with git add p. I didn't want to change this, so don't add that hunk, nor that one. But this one, yes, yes. Uh, oh, dude, hold on. I don't want that one. I love git add dash p. Um, a bunch of people suggested it. I don't know who suggested it first, but somebody in a YouTube comment suggested it, and I am so grateful to whoever that was. Thank you. Git add dash p is like one of my favorite things in the world now. Um, because I, I used to jump through such uh, ridiculous hoops to um, to get my commits looking the way I wanted, and now git add dash p like makes that so much easier. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Yes. 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 And yes. And also yes. And that's a slightly unfortunate one, but I will accept it. But this one, no. But this one, yeah. And yes. Uh, and yes. And yes. Okay, so that's great. Uh, lib IPC plus Windows Server plus the GUI. Um, Detect non unresponsive GUI apps and highlight. Detect and highlight um, IPC client connection. Now uh, tracks the time since last uh, received. Since, since the last time we um, got a message from client and um, calls a virtual function on itself after three seconds may have become unresponsive. Um, subclasses of client connection can then um, react to this if they like. We use this mechanism in Windows Server to send out a friendly ping message to the client if uh, he doesn't pong within one second. We mark the client as unresponsive and um, we compose all of his windows with a darkened appearance and uh, uh, amended title until uh, he pogs. This is um, Definitely a little on. This is um, a little on the aggressive side, and we should um, figure out a way to um, wait. Why is this? I had more space than I thought here. Got a yeah. Okay, but that was a. I don't like breaking um, between a uh and message because I feel like they belong together. If you break, like if you break here, it's so awkward. So uh, spending uh, spending so much time <laughs> like manually breaking commit messages, but it matters. It really matters because nice looking commit messages are um, so important. Like I can barely remember what it used to be like living. Uh, before I started taking commit messages seriously, and it really changes um, so many things when you start doing that. It's really worth it. Like if if you're currently living life 
uh, writing commit messages like fix stuff, uh, I, I really encourage you to consider taking it more seriously because it's, it's certainly helped me take my own um, programming more seriously. Uh, it's a little on the aggressive side and we should figure out a way to um, wake up less often. Uh, perhaps something, perhaps this should only be done uh, to Windows the user is currently interacting with, for example. Anyways, this is pretty cool. Man. And then we can get rid of those unwanted changes. Do a quick rebuild. But yeah, I'm I'm really happy with this this first cut of the feature. I think that it's it's really great. Um, and I think I think we can probably build some other interesting things on top of this. Um, not necessarily on top of the code, but like on top of the um, the fact that we we now learn or we now have a way to think of, of unresponsive programs. So I guess, oh, I, I guess I actually lost um, my hack to, to time out, but what would be something stupid to do? I guess I can make a dumb web page. Uh, loop HTML. So what if we do something like a loop that loops forever while true um, I is three. What if we try to open this page? What would happen? I'm not too surprised. <laughs> not responding. Oh, but yeah, but now we don't see him darkened because we don't have anything to paint in him. He never sent us his first content. Um, but we can we can do it this way. So we get something to show. All right, so now this thing is spinning the CPU and we go dark. Very, very cool. This thing here is a bit strange. I don't know what that is. I need to look into that separately, but anyways, I am really happy with this feature. So this will be the end of today's video. If you made it this far, then I thank you for watching, for hanging out. And uh, I hope you saw something interesting. And it was nice to, to do something um, you know, system, system wide type, uh, GUI stuff again. I've been doing so much browser stuff lately, but, uh, it's good stuff. Thanks for hanging out. And, uh, I need to, I need to say this more often. If you haven't already checked me out on GitHub sponsors on Patreon and, and things like that, if you would like to support my work, um, it is my ambition to, to do this full-time someday, so, uh, and I would definitely like to do that with the help of um, crowdfunding rather than a any kind of other thing, so <laughs> um, check that out if you're interested. Otherwise, uh, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time. Bye.